I have several thrifted blouses. They are really not my style. They don't fit me correctly, but I love the fabrics. And I've got two to show you that I have resized using patterns that I have already made and that I know fit me. Very unconventional way to use thrifted items of clothing. Sneak peek. I'm gonna show you how I achieve the fit that I wanted using patterns. So it's gonna be different, interesting. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing If you've been joining me for a while, welcome back And if you're just new and stumbled upon this video, you will see a lot of sewing footage Very practical sewing content and different ways to sew And that is certainly the approach I took for this video <laughs> Very different, I didn't just take fabric from my stash lay it out and make a pattern I didn't do that so I have been collecting a few blouses some I got this summer some I got last summer and I love the fabrics everything about the fabrics the print the feel of them some of them are very high quality now they are thrifted items some of them were actually my size but just the style was just not for me <laughs> usually these blouses have like a dropped shoulder really like large arm side that doesn't have much of a shape with a sleeve and then you have this blouse that doesn't have darts doesn't have any shaping at all and it's just not a style I like to wear it does not suit my body type at all to wear that type of garment so I have a collection of those I am getting through them I have shared these projects with you in a couple videos ago where I shared the content of my UFO box thrifted edition remove the sleeves already unpicked the side seams shoulder seams and collar pieces were attached because I knew I wanted to keep those you know why would I want to get rid of those I have two completed blouses I love and I can wear now and I'm very excited to share that with you today before I hop into my resizing garments I wanted to let you know that today's feature Friday pattern for love notions is not only one pattern but three and it's the game day jersey I made one last year very unconventional i didn't use the typical fabric you'd use to make a t-shirt this is not cotton or anything like that this is a leather look jersey that one of the sides is opaque and the other side has the leather look so i played around with cutting the different pattern pieces um, with the right side or the wrong side of the fabric this is not a hack this is sewn just as all this part there's a front yoke there there's a back yoke and I just opted to play around with that so you might have seen this video if you haven't you might want to check it out because everything about the pattern is there including how to sew this really cool overlapped V neckline there so I cropped mine and added a band there that finishes off with these really cute ties in the center and now I love these little details on things and it's my way to make a t-shirt a little bit fancy so that I can wear it with skirts and heels <laughs> so behind this little keyhole there is a facing and then the ties go up to there and that's where they tie up there I think it looks super cool the v-neck at the top it's got that little overlap there and I really like that <laughs> I put one little band there of the contrast shiny side there on just one sleeve for just a detail could have been like two rows on both whatever you want that's what I've chosen there you can see the fit of the shoulders is good for me and the sleeve too of course this t-shirt would be best if done with a jersey recommended jersey this is not a recommended fabric that's why it's got a more structured look I'm not a sports fan so I'm not like cheering on any team of any type of any sport but if you are you could make this in all the different colors and it could be really cool so all those three patterns the ladies the men's and the kids they're all five dollars each today at love notions if you want to get this pattern or all of them for your whole family <laughs> you can use my affiliate link down below to get them and you know make cool t-shirts back to what i wanted to share so i used two patterns that i have already made i know fit me i have done the basic fitting adjustment i do for any pattern which is lower the bust that and i've made these patterns before so i know that from the shoulders everything's gonna fit so 
I've chosen two patterns. One is the cadence top from Love Notions. I made one for myself and one for my mum last year, the same fabric, we were twinning. And I got the feet right for myself and for my mum. That one has a more slimmer silhouette, so from the bust down, it goes, you know, goes out just a little bit. It's not a swing style blouse. And I chose that one for a hot pink linen one that I'm making. And I've also got the Harmony blouse from Love Notions, which is also very nicely fitted. It fits me perfect there. The bust out has also been lowered. I've already done that. So I've chosen that one to place on top of, of another of these blouses, um, navy white sort of poly satin fabric. I chose the cadence for the linen version because the linen version is actually my size. I don't have much fabric on the width to play with. So that one fits perfect and I just, I bought that that was gonna fit. And the Harmony, that one's more swing. It's wider at the hips. And though it won't fit perfectly, I, it'll fit as best as it can on the other one, the navy and white version. Let me show you what I do to place these pattern pieces on an item that's already made. I have these ready to wear blouses that I've taken the sleeves off and for this pink linen one, I sort of ripped out the shoulder seam partially. I didn't do it on that one because that one has French seams and I decided to just leave it. But I've placed my pattern pieces for these two patterns. This is the cadence top and dress from Love Notions. This is the back there, that's the front. Over there is the dart that I'm going to transfer onto the blouse. I know if these shoulders are matching and everything, um, that dart is going to be correctly placed for myself. And same over there. What I have on top of this other one is the Harmony blouse. So on this one, the front is over there, the dart will be placed there, and that's the back. The Harmony blouse is sort of flared out, but that doesn't fit into this pattern piece. So I've just sort of folded in as much as the width of the fabric is going to allow. And same there for the back. I'm willing to compromise. Like, I know I'm doing what I have available here with fabric. Over there, for example, I'm going to be a little bit short on that shape there, but I don't really mind. I'm sure it, I, I can adjust that while I'm sewing. Now, these two tops are meant to be cut on the fold on the front so that is the front there so that is meant to be on the fold and these have button plackets so I've taken the center of these button plackets where the buttons and button holes are positioned because there's going to be a small overlap there in the center so that is my center there and that's going to ensure that the fit is going to be as this pattern is only that this one instead is going to have a button placket and a collar stand there so as long as that matches the center and that matches the shoulder, you can place pattern pieces onto other things like that because that's going to match. You can see there that I'm going to miss a little bit there. I'm not, I don't have the right width. So I'm going to cut as I can and then adjust the arm side as possible. Um, this is going to be an area that is not seen on the top. So if I have to add a tiny little piece of fabric there from all these bits, no one's going to know and I won't mind, but we'll see how this does when I fit it on myself. Now that one over there is a different blouse, different make, everything, and that one actually fits the side. Everything fits there, only that, that part there that's a bit more swing style on the Harmony blouse, I just had to fold in to match that width there. Over there I've also matched the shoulder seams as best as I can. I have folded away the seam allowance for the shoulder seams, you know, because the shoulder seam is already sewn there. And then I've placed everything as best I can. So, you know, I'm going to cut now, mark some darts and get to sewing. So sometimes depending on the shoulder slope, I will take apart the shoulder seam only partially. I don't want to get up to there because I don't want to get rid of these collars, right? The collars are beautiful. They need to stay there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, you have to be willing to make some compromises. Sometimes pattern pieces don't fit perfectly and they don't need to be like they don't you, you need to let go of some perfectionism with these types of projects. Now I tend to want to make everything really really correctly when I'm sewing from scratch with fabric and I won't change my approach there. But when I'm working with an um, item that's already made, I'm very liberal. If I miss a little bit of width here, if I have to add a little bit there, I'm willing to go with the flow. So I'm going to show you the pink one. I was mostly excited about this one. I love the fabric. This one came from France. 
somehow it ended up in a thrift shop in Chile this summer. I picked it up for very, very cheap and the fabric is amazing. While I was deconstructing this blouse, um, I can tell the, the, the way it was made it was very high end. You know, each seam was sewed separately, the seams were pressed open and those are really not things that you see in like in you know like high volume production so i used one of the sleeve pieces the only one i had left because the other one i used to put inside the collar of my chiffon vivace dolmen put a picture here so that's where that other sleeve went and i used the other one to make the bias binding to put on the arm side inside and because i made a curved hem to hem it with so have a look at how I did that because I didn't make continuous spice binding. I want to show you how I drew those onto the sleeve, cut them and pieced them together the old school way. I took my sleeve piece that I had left and drew all the lines to cut diagonal strips and they are one inch wide. You can see that now. And I drew the lines with my chalk. So because the sleeve was just randomly shaped, I didn't want to lose any of the material there by doing continuous bias tape because then I would have just had to use a square and lose a bunch of other pieces of the fabric. So I just did it the old fashioned way. The shape of these ends here will have any shape and I just, I can't just like cut it like that straight, you know, and like sew it onto another one because then the seam would be on the bias. You can see the fibers going across there at 45 degree angle. So in order to sew these together, you need to cut the tip of these at 45 degrees on the grain line. So I'm just pulling out one of these fibers of the linen. You can do this with cotton as well. And there you can see clearly where the grain line is. And I can chop it there. So I've got two of these pinned like that, like overlapping each other with the little flaps on each end. And where you see both fabrics join right there is the seam allowance, quarter of an inch, and then all the way down to there. And that will ensure that the ties will be the same size once it's been sewn. So I'm just sewing it a quarter of an inch. So that's how it looks when it's sewn. When you finger press the seam open like that, you can have those little things poking out so that can be trimmed. But you can see that the sides there, the raw edges match each other. This seam here is really stable. This because it's sewn on the grain line, you can see. If I just cut it straight and just sewn it, then you would have a really deformed seam. So that's how I'm going to unite several of these to form one long strip that I can just pass through the bias tape maker. So I hope that was useful. Sometimes you don't need to make yards and yards of bias tape. Sometimes you just got to use what you've got. And you might need to end up having three or four of these little weed seams. And you see how they need to be sewn on the grain line. You can't just cut them and sew them. They're going to really distort if you do that. So I hope that was useful in how I showed you how to determine where the grain line was. You can really cut at that 45 degree angle. So that is my blouse. I have the cadence top shape, arm side, and that's correctly placed right there. Fits me really well. This is from the original blouse. It might be a little bit high for me, but I did not want to remove this and risk damaging the fabric. It's quite delicate, so I just left them there. The original button placket, everything's there. I have an issue with not having enough buttons on this blouse. You can see the distance between them is quite large. So yeah, I'll tell you more about that when I show you it on. It's slightly curved, not that much. But I still thought it deserved some nice spice binding hem. I think it just looks so much nicer, so much neater. And yeah, it was a pleasure to sew. Um, okay, let me show you the little secret. Look at the back here. See the back? I didn't have enough to complete that arm side. And I showed you that, that I was going to do something. I did. And you know, no one's going to see this. That tiny little piece there. It's going to be underneath here, like it's going to be under there. No one is going to see it. And I'm really happy to have a whole blouse happen 
with that little thing there because you know that those are the compromises I'm willing to make to get a garment and I just love this I love this a lot have a look at how this one fits this one's based on the cadence top that one has a slimmer silhouette it's not swing like the harmony and I had less fabric available for this one also has the original collar stand button placket everything I even left these little flaps that don't have a pocket this is how the original blouse was so I was able to apply the cadence bust start that you might see right right there that's already been positioned to hit the height of my bust and it gives me really nice shaping here for this top and for my body type I really need shaping when I can finally get out of the house and source more buttons that are appropriate for this color I'm going to be adding an extra buttonhole in between these gaps to have the double number of buttons I probably have to remove these and replace for others that are all the same and replace these because it's always going to gate for me if I have a large gap no matter if the circumference fits me or if I have ease if they aren't close together I'm going to have gaping and that's not cool so I always wanted to have this outfit this skirt matches really well I really like the pink in there that matches this I really like how this looks you know so I'm very happy with this outfit Now I have the blue and white fabric. It's super silky, super cold on the skin. It flows amazing. And this is based on the Harmony blouse. It's wider. It's got a little bit more swing, although I couldn't use the full width of the blouse. I did as much as I could and it still fits nicely, like flowy. It's, it's, it's got quite a lot of nice ease around the waist and the hips. And I have the darts there that I like that I know fit me perfectly. I just used my store-bought satin bice binding to finish the armholes and for this one I didn't make the hem that curved, I made it more straight so that it's easier to hem with a double fold. So the first fold I do at an eighth of an inch and the second fold is at three eighths of an inch. And I do that by hand basting both folds, pressing it and then sewing it so that it's really neat, really nice and accurate. Um, there's no darts, nothing here, you know, the Harmony has a seam on the back. I opted to just put the shoulder seams, make that match, everything. But I didn't really worry about the seam at the back. I just placed it a little bit further so that I could just have one full piece there. I was mainly um, concerned that the front was going to match, that everything here was going to match to have these darts there. Now, if you can see, I'm cheating here because I have pins on the buttonholes. I thought I had navy buttons. I do not have any. <laughs> there was just none at all in my stash. I need six navy buttons. And as when I can get to a shop someday in the future, I don't know if it's near or far, <laughs> I will be able to put buttons on there. So I am sorry. I never do this. I would never show you a project that's not complete, but circumstances I can't really go to any shop and get navy buttons right now but yeah I'm very happy with this one see how it looks so you can see this has the original collar stand and collar everything's good there the same button placket I don't have the buttons there because I don't have any so I hope you can't see the pins holding it together really good coverage for me lots of coverage here down there so that you can't see anything you know you can see the bust that fits me perfect just the same as the harmony blouse it's all the same fit that I know and then I just have it at mid hip the length that I like it was way longer than this I did a slight curve not that much so it's very loose fitting very nice um, I don't think this type of fabric can be fitted and I folded the hem up and then again very small hem at the bottom and I'm just really happy the Harmony blouse fit is swingier than this it's got more volume than this but I just had it you know the width that this blouse had but I still love how this fits
I'll be doing the same process with the blouses that I have. They all have different shapes and styles and I'll be applying different patterns onto them. So it's not like I'm gonna use the cadence and the harmony for all of them. But for these styles and the size of the original garment, they were a perfect match and I'm extremely happy. <laughs> Now when you do these sorts of things, I hope you give it a go because it's really fun. Don't worry about the lengths of the side seams matching and all that stuff. You know, these original garments don't have darts. And if you choose a garment that does have a dart, you know, your gar garment is just nothing there. And then you're suddenly going to take away some length from the side because you're adding a dart and that's good for your shaping. So cut your back from your pattern. Don't worry, they are going to match. Just forget about the different lengths on your original version if you know what i mean because they're going to be all over the place when you actually trim off the hems that you want one of them might be higher or shorter but that does not matter as long as you have your original pattern pieces on top the shoulder seams match then everything's going to be good if you saw the video i posted a few days ago about my three pietra pants and the horrible oil stains i got on my red pants they did come out so I am very happy <laughs> they're all crumpled out of the wash but I did manage to get them out I really hope you enjoyed this video I know the content is very different very unconventional but making garments from ready-to-wear garments can open a huge amount of possibilities I always love sourcing high quality materials from thrift shops it's amazing the things that you can find there sometimes fabrics that you don't really see in the shops especially linen you know the more our linen is worn and washed the nicer it becomes so these used items of clothing made of linen are pure gold for me pure gold go and have a look at your thrift shop i recommend well not right now when you can you know thank you so much for watching give this video a like if you enjoyed it and i will see you very soon with another sewing video bye don't you think this is starting to wear?